Conservative leader Pierre Polyev, meanwhile, has a front bench, and it's going to be a full one. He's appointing 52 critics and another 37 associate critics. Here are some of the highlights. Alberta MP Jasraj Singh Hallen is the new critic for finance and middle class prosperity, while Quebec MP Gerard Deltel is the new environment critic. Nova Scotia MP Dr. Stephen Lewis will be in the health portfolio. Ontario MP Marilyn Gladu will be the critic for civil liberties. When it comes to former leadership rivals, Scott Aitchison is the new housing, diversity and inclusion critic while Leslin Lewis is now at Infrastructure in Communities. Those missing from the list, Ed Fast, Ed Fast, pardon me, who supported Jean Charest in the leadership, Michelle Rempel Garner, who was Patrick Brown's leadership co-chair, and former leader Aaron O'Toole, also missing, but he told the National Post he asked not to have a role because he didn't want to be a distraction to the team. Stephanie Cousy is appointed as Treasury Board Critic, and she's with us this evening. Ms. Cousy, good to have you with us. Thanks for making the time. Thank you very much for having me, Vashi. The press release to go alongside this announcement characterized the appointment of you and your colleagues uh, as a team, a new inflation-busting conservative shadow cabinet. How will it bust inflation? Well, it's no secret that currently we are in a cost of living crisis in addition to incredible inflationary pressure. And although the shadow cabinet has been announced today, Vashi, this is an entire caucus-wide commitment to busting inflation. This Liberal government has coming up in the near future. They have said that they will triple the carbon tax by 2030. They are set to raise payroll taxes by January 1st, on January 1st, and they are also set to increase taxes on heating, food, and gas on April 1st, of this year, coming year. So there are certainly a lot of ways that we, as not only a conservative shadow cabinet, but a conservative caucus can hold this liberal government to account because they are coming at Canadians with so many tax hikes in a time where Canadians simply can't afford them. Okay, let's parse out some of what you just talked about because you're talking about uh, uh, hikes to the CPP and EI premiums as well as the carbon tax which or the price on carbon, which increases in April of each year. Let's start with the uh, CPP and EI uh, hikes because the CPP hikes uh, are the result of an agreement, uh, the rate hikes are an agreement with the provinces. Uh, there was a discussion about wanting Canadians to have a more secure retirement. I is your party saying that they would break that agreement because that's what's necessary to stop that hike from happening? What we're saying, Vashi, is that we want Canadians to have more money in their pockets. And this Trudeau government is committed to keeping money out of Canadians' pockets. And this payroll tax hike, which is going to happen on January 1st currently, is just one of the many ways that we as an inflation-busting shadow cabinet and inflation-busting caucus will hold this government to account. With respect, Ms. Cousy, that doesn't answer the question, though, about what your party would do about the agreements that have been arrived at around CPP with the provinces. Effectively, if you're arguing for that hike not to happen, you're saying you would break the agreement with the provinces. Is that what a conservative government would do? I think it's one of the many areas, Vashi, that we would look at, because as I mentioned, it's not only the tax hikes for the payroll taxes on January 1st. It's a, a number of other taxes which are going to occur under this Liberal government, including taxes to food, gas, and home heating on April 1st. So there are a number of taxes with this Liberal government that we are going to be addressing, in addition to the carbon tax, which they are looking at tripling by 2030. So, so the pro and we're going to talk about the carbon tax in a second. So, but you're saying that the provinces are wrong in wanting a, a greater sense of security for people who live in their provinces. The premiers of those provinces are wrong uh, in wanting, uh, uh, you know, a greater benefit to Canadians through CPP. That is not something the Conservatives are in favor of. We are saying that the Liberal government is wrong on continuing to tax Canadians when we are in the middle of a cost of living crisis, Bashi. That's what we are concerned about. And we think that money belongs in the pockets of Canadians. And, and I certainly understand the argument about more money going into Canadians' pockets. I think a lot of people watching will as well. But not all taxes are created equal, right? Uh, paying into CPP is so that you can get something out of it when you retire. Uh, and so my, my, my point is whether or not uh, basically the Conservatives think the provinces were wrong in asking the federal government and working with the federal government to increase that benefit and thereby, yes, increase the rate through which Canadians pay into it. 
our leader was not kidding when he said that under a conservative government, there will be no new taxes. And that for every dollar of new spending, there will have to be a dollar of savings. And this is what my shadow cabinet and our caucus will continue to hold this liberal government account to, is that we wanna see more money in the pockets of Canadians and no new taxes. And it doesn't matter what type of tax it is, Vashi, whether it's a payroll tax or tax on home heating, tax on food, tax on gas. We wanna see no new taxes. We are committed to this as a conservative caucus and as a conservative sh shadow cabinet. And certainly our leader, Pierre Polyev, is committed to no new taxes as well. So that will be our number one objective. And that includes no new payroll taxes. Okay, I, I understand the gist of the message uh, around no new taxes. Uh, respectfully, though, you didn't address the, the substance of the question around provinces, but I do want to ask about the carbon tax specifically. Uh, is it disingenuous to position this as the Liberals simply putting a tax and making you pay more to, to fill up your car, to make you heat your home, when in fact Canadians are scheduled this week on Friday to get that money back in a rebate? No, I don't think that it is a disingenuous at all. These taxes have a real effect on Canadians, a real effect on the cost of living. We are hearing stories about uh, Canadians that are two months away from insolvency under this Liberal government. We are hearing stories about mothers that are putting water in their baby's formula. These taxes have a real impact on Canadians and Canadian families. And that's why we are committed to no new taxes. And this rebate is simply doing what this Liberal government does. And that is taking a bunch with one hand and giving a little bit back with the other. And that's why as a shadow cabinet and as a caucus, we are committed to no new taxes. But respectfully, again, Ms. Cousy, and, and I certainly do understand the point, uh, you know, we're all feeling the pinch and the idea of paying more for anything right now is really, really tough on people. But if I pay $5 extra at a store and then, you know, four times a year, I get that, you know, I, I get that money back at some point. If I, if I am being rebated for that money, it's, it's actually a, a net zero there. It's not like I am losing money. It's not like I am not putting money in my pockets, right? It's, it, I, I don't really understand how you're characterizing it as just the government taking money when in fact there is a rebate here. It's actually coming Friday. That's not accurate, Bashi. A tax is a tax as a tax. Whether it is a payroll tax or a tax on home heating or a tax on food or a tax on gas, these, this is all money that is being taken out of the pockets of Canadians by this Liberal government. And as I said, under a Conservative government, there will be no new taxes. For every dollar of new spending, we will find a dollar of savings. And that's something that we're simply not seeing right now with this Liberal government. We look at the spending in budget 2022, we're at $56.5 billion, and that's simply not acceptable. So as I said, under a Conservative government, there will be no new taxes. And for every dollar of new spending, we will find a dollar of savings. When will your party release its own climate change plan? Since the carbon tax, the price on carbon is integral to the Liberals' plan, and you say that you will completely get rid of it, when will your party actually tell Canadians what you will do to fight the harmful effects of climate change, some of which we are seeing you know, to a devastating degree in Atlantic Canada over the past 18 days? Ashi, I think Canadians can look forward to a plan that has reasonable and practical targets, something that this government has failed to achieve since they got into power. I think that we're also looking forward to a plan where we work with industry instead of blindsided. And that's something, Vashi, that benefits all Canadians. And sorry, the question, Ms. Cousy, was when can Canadians expect to hear that plan? I think Canadians can look forward to a plan with practical, attainable targets and a plan that will work for all Canadians. Soon? I, I would say very soon. We have a new shadow minister for the environment today, a new shadow minister for natural resources. And I know that they will take the time to create a plan with reasonable and attainable targets that works for industry and all Canadians and not just special interests and activists. Okay, Ms. Cousy, I'll leave it there. I'm out of time. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Vashi. Stephanie Cousy is the newly appointed critic for the Treasury Board for the federal Tories. 
Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.